welcome to the Elderwood Craft Podcast. My name's Emma and this is my place where I talk to you about all the things I've been making since we last met. Today is Sunday the 17th of October. A very warm welcome to you if you are a returning viewer or if you are a new viewer. You are all very welcome here. You will find show notes um, which contain links to all the things that I talk to you about both in the description box underneath this video, but also on my website, which is www.elderwoodcraft.com. You'll also find in the show notes um, links to all the places where you can find me online, but I've got a card, maybe it sits there? I'm not quite sure. Um, which, um, yeah, th there'll be something on the screen here which will give you the key ones. Um, what else do I need to tell you? Um, so yeah, this is a, this is a making podcast. Um, oh, I was going so well. I have my train of thought and it's just completely gone. Anyway, I also need to tell you that I am a maker of project bags that you can also find for sale on my website. Um, and that I have just given you the details of. Um, so in today's episode, I've got my show notes here, in today's episode we will have a little bit of admin, I've got yet another prize to announce for the um, make-along that's going on, the year-long make-along, and then I've got one, two, three, four things I think to talk to you about. No finished objects this week, but four things that I've been working on um, over the last three weeks. What else? Um, that's about it really. A little bit of chat maybe about what I've got coming up on the needles. Um, but yeah, so I think I think today will be quite a short episode comparatively, but I wanted to um, I wanted to get more consistent with my showing up on YouTube. So um, shorter, I think, is the way to go going forwards. Right onwards. First things first, some admin. So we have got the Eldenwood Craft Make Nine Along for 2021 going on at the moment. We are now into the final quarter. It's a quarter four that runs from October to December. So if you're taking part this year, don't forget to put all your finished objects um, in the finished object thread in the Ravelry group. There'll be a link to that down below. Any finished objects posted between October and December will be eligible for a prize uh, that I will draw at the beginning of January or when I first podcast in January. And also at that time, I will draw a prize um, taken from anybody who has finished all their nine items from their make nine. I always find this really difficult to explain. It's not a difficult concept. Um, but I think you've been, most of you have been with me long enough to, to get the gist of that. Um, we have the prize to be drawn for the July, August, September finished objects. And I did that just before I um, sat down to record today. I also, hopefully this will work i also did a little screen record of um a, po a, a section from the podcast uh two episodes ago where i showed you the prize i didn't want to unwrap it again because um yeah it's all i'd, I'd unwrapped it when i showed it to you originally i've wrapped it up again and i didn't need to unwrap it again anyway ramble um but Hopefully what you're seeing on screen at the moment is a um, shot of, or a, a clip of the, um, when I shared with you, Sherry Iris's generous donation, prize donation um, for the Make Along. So there is a skein of yarn, or a, so a skein of yarn and a mini that goes with it, um, some postcards and a beautiful handmade um, sort of bucket, fabric bucket. Um, bucket's not the right word to describe it but it's because it's absolutely exquisite but um, you know what I mean and um, I have drawn the winner and that the winner for this quarter just gone is Smiley Yammer who is Kate 
Kate, you're in the UK. Um, Kate, I know I have your address, um, but just drop me a message to let me know that you've seen this and I will get your prize sent off to you. Kate's winning number, I can't quite remember what number it was, I did write it down somewhere, um, but the the winning um, finished object was an all about brioche shawl and very beautiful it was too. So thank you to everybody who continues to take part in this. I can see already that there are quite a few people who have finished all their um, nine objects for the year. So well done to you. You are all in line for um, uh, the, the prize draw at the end of the year. And on that note, if there are any makers out there who fancy donating a prize, whether you're a yarn dyer or a bag maker or you know, anything, whatever, I don't mind, um, it would be lovely to have some prize donations. Um, otherwise, you'll get something that I um, pull together. Okay, so what of my make nine, I hear you ask. Um, I had a quick look when I was putting my show notes together of how I have got on with my make nine. I think it would be fair to say I've um, lost a bit of enthusiasm for my make nine this year. But if I just quickly run through what was on my list, I have got it somewhere. Bear with me, I've got a picture of it. Actually, I can put a picture on the screen if I've still got it. So what I had planned to make was I wanted to finish two of my blanket projects. Yay, I've done that. I showed you those in the last episode. So I finished my um, crochet from your heart blanket, which I gave to my daughter. She has now gone off to university and um, is doing OK. I think she's loving her course. So... I'm not quite sure how much use the blanket has got, but hey, <laughs> she's got it if she needs it. Um, and I also finished my Cozy Memories blanket, which I um, uh, changed from a blanket into a cold morning cosy wrap while I'm sat here doing my knitting. So that's tick for that. Habitation throw on track, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. Two sweaters. Um, there's a sweater there that's not far off being finished. I will be casting on another one, um, but I don't know if I'll get that finished before the end of the year. Socks for Dennis. Failed on that sofa. Well, I haven't even tried it, but I might cast on a pair of socks for him um, when I finish my two pairs that I've got on the needles. Colour work hats. Haven't got anywhere near knitting a hat recently, uh, but again, it could happen before the end of the year. Perfect fitting sock was number six and I'm working through that. I, I keep tweaking little bits and pieces, little different elements of my sock. Um, I, th I think we've got there. Um, I think I know what, um, what I like best in terms of ease and foot length and that sort of thing. So I will potentially give that a tick. Um, knitting from my patterns that I already own. Um, have I been doing that? I've knit quite a few free patterns this year actually, but I suppose um, one of my pairs of socks that I'm going to show you today is a pattern that I own from a magazine. Um, I'm not quite so sure I could comfortably tick that one off. Um, so a dress, I haven't got near dressmaking yet, it's something I desperately want to do but um, finding the time is not so easy. And then finishing off my New York cross stitch again, I did, I've done a little bit on that this year but it won't get finished. I, I have to admit I have fallen out a little bit of love with cross stitch. I am not quite enjoying the process as I used to but um, one day I might come back to it. So my make nine Yes, I've um, not done as well as other people have done, but it has given me a bit of a focus for some of the things I want to knit. But um, I have been given quite a lot of thought about where I want my knitting to go over the next few months, um, which maybe I'll talk about at some point. It's nothing, nothing groundbreaking, but um, just I, I really want to knit from the stash a bit more and how I can do that without just knitting for the sake of knitting so um yeah that's something to 
um, talk about over future episodes I think. So you're here for the knitting, you're not here for me rambling on about not very much. Um, so what have I been working on? Well my habitation throw is coming on very nicely. I am keeping up to date with it. So the habitation throw is a pattern by Helen Stewart who is Curious Handmade. It's a throw as the name suggests um, and I have been knitting it, I've, I've been using it as a year-long project using minis that I am buying each month from Sherry Iris and they are her wildflower monthly minis. I'm going to tell you the flowers that I have put into my blanket so far. Uh, if I can find, here we go. See, so yeah, I've even kept all the ball bands. So hopefully be able to run through them. So the current month is lavender. No, let me, let me do it in order. I'll need to find, I need to find the pattern on my Ravelry um, page. Hang on, sorry not very professional. Okay, so oh, here are all my minis all wound up. These are the minis that I haven't yet used from the, oh how many months have I been doing this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven months worth of minis in there and you get obviously get five minis per month and I've been using two of those five so in there are 21 unused minis which is a project in itself isn't it okay so here is the blanket as best I can or the throw sorry as best as I can show you because it is quite large now Okay, there's, I think you can see the bottom. It's really pretty, isn't it? I have to say, they are not colours, excuse me for doing that, they're not colours I, or, and some of them aren't colours I would ordinarily have picked for myself, which is why I really like um, doing projects like this. You can, for me, um, I'm quite conservative when it comes to the colours I choose for my knitting. I like to stick to the greens and the blues and the browns and the greys. So this you know, is obviously anything but anything but that and it's been real fun. I've really enjoyed it and I, I think I've said this before, I really look forward to getting the next month's minis and um, I wind them up almost as soon as they arrive and get cracking um, with the next two colourways. So. The colours that we have got are, okay, so the first two, the green and the the, the lighter white with some greys is Snowdrop. And then the second green that you can see with the pink is Hellebore. Then you've got this purple and per the purple and the lighter pinks and blues, that's Tulip. Then you've got a blue and blue and pink, which is Bluebell. And then you've got uh, this light blue and this sort of peachy colour. And that is, oh, my screen's just gone. Oops. Oh, hum. That is Lilac. Did I, we done Lilac. Um, the browns and the pinks and the greens are honeysuckle and then um, I think that's right and then these two colourways so this purpley one and the browns I'm not sure how well you could see any of that but that is lavender so we've got snowdrop, hellebore, tulip, bluebell, lilac, honeysuckle and lavender and it's really nice I am really enjoying it I'd like to do something like this again next year because there's a very definite end point um, to completing the blanket or project um, and I'm thinking of doing something similar 
I'm using um, the jelly roll pattern from Kay Jones because you could do a strip a month and have 12 strips um, that you do throughout the year. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with this pattern, it's basically a big square and you um, do a, a, it's very simple, it's, it's um, half the pattern you are increasing up to the corners and then for the second half of the pattern you decrease um, and then every few rows you put one of these pretty eyelet rows in so it's it's very very straightforward but very enjoyable pattern and my favorite bit of the pattern probably is um i don't know how well you oops sorry don't know how well you'll be able to see it but there's a there's an eye cord edging on the um, on each on the edge, which is where the edge is. <laughs> um, I really like using that um, eye cord border that is knit in as you go. Um, do you like my Cedar River Knits Progress Keeper? Turn that round. Oops, can't. Doesn't want to, doesn't want to turn. There you go. Cedar River Knits, I think, is a Canadian maker. She make, hand makes these. Um, I haven't seen her around on Instagram recently. Her her photos are always lovely, so I do I like to follow her. Um, but I haven't seen her around recently. I don't know if she's still making. Anyway. That is the habitation through. The next month's um, minis have been released by Sherry. They are poppy, I think. Poppies. Um, they look beautiful in the in the um, image in her shop. Uh, yeah. So each each um, mini that I'm using is twenty grams. Um, I get through pretty much all of a 20 gram mini for the, um, the the sections of the blanket nearer the halfway point obviously because they're longer rows the sections at the bottom um, don't quite use the, t the full 20 grams um, but yeah I am thoroughly enjoying that I might knit on that while I'm editing after this actually and get get the last of the 20 get the last of the um, lavender finished ready for the poppies to come right what should we have a look at next do you want socks or sweater socks okay all right right um okay this i've got two socks to show you this week um this one actually is a finished sock should i go and get a sock blocker i didn't think i had anything to show you that was finished but i have got a half finished object you can tell i know i said i've done show notes and i have done show notes but i don't feel very prepared for this <laughs> anyway let me pop this on the sock blocker so you can see it it's a beautiful sock lovely yarn and it deserves to be shown off so here it is this is a um slip stitch pattern it's basically a vanilla sock with some slip stitches thrown in the yarn for the main sock is Stranded Dye Works in um, the Industrial Kingfisher way, Industrial Kingfisher colourway. And the contrast that I've used for the heel and the toe, I think it's a, I think it's just a drops fable. That's the colourway. Or it could be be a West Yorkshire Spinners. I'm not sure, I don't know the colourway name, but it's lovely and autumnal, as you can see. And there is the, whoops, covered in, put all my needles in it. Um, oh, I just dropped a needle down the side of the chair, hang on. Rescued. Okay, there's um, Industrial Kingfisher. It's gorgeous, gorgeous colourway. Um, yeah, I thought they looked rather nice together. So, yeah, a nice autumnal 
sock. I am... Um, what did I do? I did a two by two rib, uh, probably about 30 rows before I, um, 30 rows for the, the, the leg and then knit to, I think that's two and a half inches or I might have that completely wrong actually. Anyway, I knit to wherever the, the toe needed to start. The toe and the heel are both the um, umbrella toe and heel from um, Kay Jones's pattern, the umbrella socks. I quite like doing those at the moment, although I have got a bit of an urge to do a go back to a heel flap and gusset. So my next pair of socks that I cast on may well have a heel flap and gusset. Uh, but yeah, the umbrella, the umbrella heel is an afterthought heel um, and I find that it fits me quite nicely so yeah they're really lovely aren't they the the heel is coming the the yarn for the heel and the toe is coming out really beautifully I am knitting these on 2.25 millimeter dpn's uh, I'm using the old, good old, higher, higher metal DPNs. Oh, camera just stopped recording because I must have been talking for 25 minutes or however long. I did do quite a few takes at the beginning, <laughs> um, quite a few attempts at the beginning to get the beginning right. Um, anyway, yeah, so slip stitch sock, sock number one. Should we go on to the other socks? This is going to be a right royal mess because I have got needles attached to this sock like they're going out of fashion. Right. OK, this pair of socks is my um, sock knitting for the Strictly Sock Along 2021. That's a knit along, knit along run by lovely Ali of the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. Um, and each year throughout sort of September, October, November, December time, while Strictly Come Dancing is on, um, she runs a sock along and it's a huge amount of fun. Cheating is most definitely called for um, and lots and lots of people take part. So the yarn that I'm using for this sock is this gorgeous uh, yarn. This is uh, Fitzwilliam Darcy from Nora George. It's beautiful. One of my favourite things when watching people podcast is when they do this and you see the um, the cake come into focus. So yeah, I love this colourway so much. I'm using a contrast, not a dissimilar colour from the um, contrast in my last pair of socks, but it's a different it's a different one it's a it's a mini of unknown origin and i wish i did know the origin because it's gorgeous and i would love a full skein in that and the socks that i am knitting are the fragment socks from uh an upper head and stuart pattern actually that's uh that is them i had this um pattern in one of my liner magazines I forget which one does it say on here this is just a photocopy from the magazine though it doesn't say uh, but I believe that they are um, available as an individual pattern on Ravelry so the fragment socks are a they're a cable sock but it's just a one stitch cable and I've been cabling without a cable needle and um quite enjoying it actually I'm not the biggest fan of cabling per se but um, when you can cable without a cable needle it does make life a little bit easier so this is how far I have got let me see if I can just untwist my yarn oh it's everything is getting caught up <laughs> okay so where I am up to. So I have knit the the rib, the leg, the foot, 
on the toe and I have got my needles in just ready to kitchener. I'm not kitchener in yet because I haven't tried this on and I am halfway or midway through doing a an umbrella heel. This particular pattern as it's written calls for a heel, heel flap and gusset but I was minded as I have been for my last few socks as I said to do a um, an umbrella heel so I am midway through knitting that. I thought that the, the two yarns went quite nicely together so that's what the sock looks like from the front. I don't know if you're going to be able to see. Let's see if I can open this up for you. Yeah you can just about see the the um, cable pattern, these diagonal lines that run through. It's a really really simple pattern, um, very easy to memorise and read your knitting. Um, but yeah, that cable pattern runs all the way down the front of the sock. And then you can see how the yarn would knit up ordinarily on the sole of the foot. It's beautiful, isn't it? So I am principally knitting these on um, Chiaogu 2.25 bamboo needles, DPNs. Um, and I'm doing the afterthought umbrella heel on Chiaogu 2.25 red lace needles. Um, cabling without a cable needle is really quite straightforward. I have lost a few stitches here and there but um, not too many and it's quite easy to pick them back up. Um, yeah so this probably I know it's Sunday, actually Strictly is on today so I could I could knit on that. I rarely knit on these while the programme is on. Um, there's too, as I've said this before, there's too much going on uh, when Strictly is actually on for me to be able to concentrate on knitting a sock. I know you don't have to, well for this particular sock it does take quite a bit of concentration because of the cabling. Um, so I have been employing some cheating tactics and I have been knitting on these when I've been having FaceTimes with my daughter um, who lives in Lincoln, well, she's at university in Lincoln. Link, this is, this is my cheating methodology. Lincoln is uh, close to Grimsby, <laughs> um, which is where Kevin from Grimsby comes from, hails from, and Kevin from Grimsby was until quite recently a one of the professionals on Strictly, so I um, am quite comfortable with that cheat, I'm quite comfortable knitting my socks when I'm chatting to Ella, sometimes if I'm just thinking about her or thinking about messaging her I'll have a, I'll have a knit on the sock as well or um, you know just as she's going through my mind I might sit and have a knit. <laughs> Um, so yeah, quite happy not knitting them when Strictly is actually on. It's all a bit of fun, isn't it? Um, so yeah, hopefully this sock will be finished over the next day or maybe today. Um, and then I'll cast on sock two during the week. I have been knitting on these as well. Um, sometimes in the evenings when we've been watching TV what have we been watching that I've been knitting on them? Oh, so we, we've been, we've been, bin, well, bin, we don't really binge watch much, but we've been watching, um, very late to the party, we've been watching Shit's Creek. Um, and you're all probably going, oh, we know that, that's been on for years. Well, we've only just discovered it this year. Um, I think we're on season two. We tend to watch a couple of episodes a night. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love all the characters. Um, I love David. David's hilarious. Um, he just makes me laugh every time he's on. Um, so yeah, we've been watching that one night. And then the other thing that we have just discovered, again, very late to the party, and I know this is a bit of a tangent, but I quite listening to, quite like enjoying hearing what people um, when they talk about what they're watching on podcasts. So the other thing that we've been watching, 
um, which is just one of the best things I've ever watched and that's Ted Lasso I think it's Lasso not Lasso uh, yeah Ted Lasso Coach Lasso of course it is um, I don't know again probably most of you are going oh yeah we know that where have you been but it's it, it's just the funniest TV program I love I love Ted Coach Lasso um, I think he's just so funny and he's just got the biggest heart hasn't he um, who else do I like in that obviously um, Rebe Rebecca is it Rebecca the the boss and um, Roy, Roy Kent, he just makes me laugh every time he's on. <laughs> um, he's so rude, isn't he? But um, anyway, yeah, so um, doing a bit of knitting on my socks whilst watching that in the, watching those two programmes in the evening. And the other thing that's just about to start that I'm really excited about is Succession. Have you been watching that? Have you seen that? We're about to... Um, embark on season three which i think it's tonight um the first of those is released i adore that program so much such a dysfunctional horrible set of characters but they the the program is so good that's so character driven um i cannot wait for that to to start we'll be watching that tomorrow evening um after dinner so yay for succession and Schitt's Creek and Ted Lasso, three really good programmes. Because there's not really, I don't know, there doesn't seem to be an awful lot else on at the moment. We haven't been watching Squid Gate, which everyone else seems to be watching. Um, not really my cup of tea, I don't think. I, I haven't watched any of it, I couldn't possibly say. But um, anyway, that's TV talk done. Um, I don't know how we got on to TV talk. We were talking about socks and Strictly Come Dancing. But should I show you my sweater now? Now you saw this um, in my last episode. I think I had got to, I hadn't got very far. I can't quite remember where, but sort of maybe knit about this much. Maybe up, had I split for the sleeves? I can't quite remember. However, I can show you now that this is not far off being finished so this is the turtle dove sweater turtle dove 2 it's patterned by espace tricot it's a free pattern on ravelry and probably on the yes excuse me the espace tricot website as well i'm knitting it in the recommended yarn which is drops air it's an aran weight very affordable um it's a blow so it's a modern construction it's blow blow construction um and this is the colorway that the original pattern was knit in it's mid gray i think uh and it's it's as soft as you like it's i forget is it alpaca i forget um the makeup of the yarn i have got ball bands in here i'm on to my sixth ball it's yeah 65 percent alpaca 28 percent polyamide and seven percent wool there's the wool band drops there it's about four pounds something a ball from wool warehouse i know you can get it in other places um so yeah six they're are they 50 gram balls that would make sense wouldn't it if i've used six let me just double check that yeah 50 grams 150 meters um really really enjoyable project and i have cast off the rib at the bottom i have knit sleeve number one i'm really not very happy about that bind off though i might need to go back and have a look at that um and i am not far off start having started sleeve number two so there it is it's the, the yarn just knits up beautifully and I'm not even sure it's going to need much of a block I don't know if you'll see but the the stitch definition 
it just, I just don't think that blocking is going to do particularly much for it to be honest it fits nicely there's no if, if I were to block it it would simply be to just sort of really finish it and set set the stitches in place it doesn't need any pulling and stretching or anything um, yeah I am incredibly pleased with that it's going to be such a comfortable wear I think I am going to turn the rolled neck turn the roll this isn't going to show you very well but turn this under a bit um, and so it so it so it's a, a folded neck um, it just sits a little bit too high for me if I were to do this again and I may very well do it again in possibly the same yarn but a different colour um, but I would probably just do a shorter shorter neckband I've seen that on some of the um, projects on Ravelry and it looks nice so yeah Turtle Dove 2 drops air um, I've been knitting them with these Chow Gu I think they're called Patina double pointed needles they're really nice I like these um, I didn't do a gauge swatch but that doesn't seem to have mattered on this occasion I think because it's such an oversized project um, the gauge isn't as important as if it were a little bit more fitted so that also should be a finished project by the time I record again which would be exciting that sh that should be um yeah finished object right what else have i got to tell you can i tell you anything about anything else about what i have been knitting on talked about the needles talked about the yarns i think that's about it if there is anything as i'm going through these um if there is anything that you would like more information on that's either that I've either not spoken about or is not in the show notes then um, do just get in touch won't you I'm really happy to help I think that's one of the one of the jobs of being a podcaster is to be as helpful as possible and to provide a little bit of either inspiration or education to um, those of you who take the time to sit and watch us um gabble on about our knitting um so yeah i'm really happy at any time to to answer any questions that you have got i know i've had, had lots of questions in the past about um how i've gone about certain projects and things like that what needles i've used um that sort of thing so yeah really happy to help that um okay the only other thing that i've written down really is about what's coming up next with my knitting um as i will have finished this sweater fairly soon and the habitation throw fairly soon and the socks probably won't take that long either i was having a think about what i might like to knit next oh on that subject i have got my next project lined up let me talk about this first now let me talk about let's keep train of thought let me talk about what I've been thinking about knitting so um, I want to knit through some of my stash I've got my stash organized in drawers behind you maybe I'll do a tour of that one day but I've got one two three four bags one is full of gray based yarn one is full of bluish base ones blues and greens another bag full of browns obviously shades within that within all those bags and one bag of color <laughs> um and i really want to start knitting through it because i these there have been there are yarns in those bags that i have had for a long time many years and it's pointless sitting in a drawer in a bag keeping for best so yeah i'd like to I'd like to start using them. That's one of the reason I, reasons I use that Nora George um, skein. I have been, I've had that for, I don't know, four or five years. Um, and I just thought, no, I'm just going to start using these. So I'm thinking about knitting a fingering weight ra raglan sweater, or maybe set in sleeves, but not yoked, probably, although you never know. 
Um, but yeah, probably a raglan sweater that I can stripe um, using some of my yarns. And I'm thinking about knitting a flax light because it's a free pattern. It's um, be really straightforward. It'll be some reasonably mind mindless and mindful knitting. So that might be the next sweater on the needles. I'd also, along the same vein, I'd also really like to knit a big colour block scarf. And I've seen one on Ravelry. I think it's called Inchworm. I, I saved it the other day. Um, favourites. It's in my favourites. I appreciate that um, me looking at my phone is probably not the most exciting podcast. Uh, there it is. I don't know if this will show very well. Sorry. Is that coming into focus? So it's basically just a tube with some ribbing on the ends, um, but whoever the designer is has um, colour blocked it really nicely. So I'm going to have a think about something like that. Um, I mentioned earlier jelly roll blanket which I think I will cast on when I've finished my habitation throw. Um, I've also written down Stephen West MCAL and I think I wrote that down just to say I'm not doing it. It seems that everybody else who knits on the entire planet is knitting the Stephen West MCAL um, and it's just not something that appeals to me. A mystery knit along um, if you're not sure what MCAL means, it's mystery knit along. And you basically, you buy a pattern and you get sent clues. You, you get sent a portion of the pattern to knit um, every week or however often the designer releases the next, each, each set of instructions. And the idea is that everyone um, takes part at the same time and it's exciting and you get to see um, everyone's pattern build up and you have no idea what the final um, product is going to look like and I have to say that just does not appeal to me in any way shape or form I like to knit I like to use my knitting time for to knit something that I know I'm going to enjoy knitting I'm going to enjoy the final product and I'm going to wear it um, and I just I don't I don't I don't know what the word is but I don't think that see I like Stephen I like Stephen West's patterns I like to look at them they're visually stunning but most of them I just wouldn't wear um, I have knit a couple of his patterns I've knit the vertices unite but I knit it very in in greys and blues um, but and I do wear that an awful lot and I also knit his exploration station and again in much more sort of muted colours and I wear that and maybe that's Maybe that's the answer to it, to a make along, but anyway, to a mystery knit along. But yeah, it's just not something that I have been drawn towards. Uh, but I have enjoyed seeing everyone else's um, shawls knit up. I think they're two weeks in. Anyway, so I think that's probably why I wrote down Stephen West MCAL because I'm not making it. Uh, but the other thing I'm going to make is something in this bag. Now, last week it was my birthday and. We, my husband and I, Dennis and I, we went for a drive around Somerset to have a look at the local area and we ended up in Froome um, and we went to all about, all about the yarn. Used to be known, used to be called the Froome Yarn Collective um, and I went there with a very specific purchase in mind. So I'm going to be making this next. Um, it's Petite Knits Stockholm Slipover. I have become absolutely obsessed with finding the perfect slipover tank top, as I would probably call it in normal conversation. Um, that's not quite my perfect tank top, but it's the best that I've found and I loved, it's quite a popular pattern and it does look really good on um, when I've seen it knit up on loads of other people so um, 
this is what I'm going to knit next once that is finished and the yarn that I'm using it in using to knit with it is the recommended yarn and I got this in all about the yarn and oops just getting all, all my skeins out to show you so the so the the pattern calls for a fingering weight yarn and a mohair held double I've not done that before I'm covered in grey threads from that <laughs> um I thought excuse me I thought I was not particularly interested in knitting with mohair but having knit this and um, see th this isn't mohair this is alpaca but it, I think it's probably knitting up quite similar to how mohair would knit up with when it's held with another yarn so I thought okay let's give it a go and so I am knitting the main, my, my fingering weight yarn is this, which is Issaga Tweed. Yeah, again, that the, the camera cut out. I'm obviously talking for longer than I um, anticipated. So Issaga Tweed in the Walnut colourway. It's beautiful. That's coming out fairly good fairly true to life on camera you can see the tweedy nips in it and the lovely chocolatey chocolatiness it's quite rustic but not over it's not that rustic there's the the label isiga are you going to there we go and there's the details on the back Each skein is 70% wool, 30% mohair, 200 metres for 50 grams. And I'm holding it double with this lovely squishiness, which is the mohair. And this is also from Iska. And this is silk mohair, 75% kid mohair, 25% silk, 25 grams, 212 meters. And colorway, color 7S. I don't know what colorway it is. Oh, it's so soft. I worry that I'm not going to be able to find the end of it to start knitting, but hey. Um, but yeah, let me show you the two of them together. I'm looking forward to starting that this is this is the, the the yarn called for in the pattern I think she knit petite knit used a gray but um fancied something brown so that will be my next cast on when that's finished um we had a lovely day out when we 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 were like um a couple of old people in the car we thought we'd have a little tour of Somerset. Um, so we drove up to Froome, had um, had a cup of coffee on St Catherine's Hill. That was really nice. Um, had a slice of vegan blueberry bakewell tart. That was really nice. Um, and had a wander round. Then we got in the car and we went to Wells which is, a, I think Wales is the smallest cathedral city in the UK, in England, something like that. Um, absolutely beautiful, really old. If I, if I um, remember while I'm editing, I'll try and pop some photos in of a couple of the shots that I took. Um, it was a beautiful place. And then we what came home through Cheddar Gorge, which I'd never been to before, um, I used to have a jigsaw when I was a little girl with Cheddar Gorge on on it on it. Um, it was a it was a map of Britain, jigsaw map of Britain, and um, I can always remember Cheddar Gorge being on there. Um, and it was like this; it's always been this sort of mythical place to me. Um, so yeah, we drove through Cheddar, and that was stunning. It, for those of you who don't know, 
um, I was trying to describe it to our daughter and we said it's sort of a, the UK version of the Grand Canyon without a river. Um, so it's smaller than the Grand Canyon, but just, you know, it's stunning. Um, uh, yeah, you drive around all these um, windy roads and you've got these great cliff faces on either side. Um, saw lots of climbers on the on the the, the sides. Um, and then drove through some really beautiful Somerset countryside on our way home. So it was a really nice day. Um, I think we have, we've picked well coming down here. Um, we're really happy. So um, that's it really for the knitting. I haven't got much to say about my shop. I'm currently working through um, a wholesale order and some made to order orders and um, thank you so much if you stopped by um in recent weeks and had a look or made a purchase um it's been great thank you the um it's always reassuring to know that the interest is still there i've been doing this oh i don't know since about 2016 actually do you know what this is my october is my five year podcasting anniversary five years and I've done 34 episodes it's not the greatest um production rate but um I think there'll be more of them to come in the future far more frequently anyway um I've forgotten what I was saying I was rambling really um but you know so yeah thank you um for stopping by and buying a project bag or two um and just for for keeping the interest up it means the world to me it really does um and i know it's a cliche but every time an order comes through it just gives me the biggest happiness um that i can possibly have knowing that um your support allows me to to do this on a full-time basis now once my made to order bags are finished and the wholesale order which and that'll all be done this week um, I'll be making some more ready to ship bags for the shop uh, I've got some seasonal bags coming up um, some fun little sock sock size bags um, for your Christmas Eve knit along perhaps um, and there'll be some more sheet bags being added to the shop I'm, I'm going to pop some zippered versions in this time um possibly some more drawstrings but it it staggers me that there's still such an appetite for the sheet bags and that I, i'm truly grateful for that um if you do want one keep an eye out because i will be pull, putting these into the shop on a very regular basis um i would also say that um, it's worthwhile signing up for my newsletter i'll put a link to the sign up page in the show notes that you can find where to sign up really easily on my website as well. Um, the newsletter, I'm sort of slowly getting into doing that. Um, it will be, it will become more consistent, more regular, uh, but I share a little bit of behind the scenes, a bit about what's going on in my life. But um, subscribers to the newsletter will also get special discounts. Um, they will um, have what I'm hoping to be able to do is to provide um, subscribers with early access sometimes to some of my shop updates. Um, if I make samples and I'll do sample sales which will be exclusive to subscribers so things like that and I'd quite like to get my subscribers into maybe choosing the next fabric that I use so there's all sorts of things that I want to do with it so I would say if you're interested in um, staying up to date with Eldenwood Craft the newsletter is probably a really good place to to do that i'm also obviously on instagram i don't need to be chatting about instagram i'm rambling so yeah newsletter is a really good place to keep in touch with me okay i think that's about all i've got to say today um, i'm sorry for the ramble i wasn't as prepared as normal um, but I hope you have enjoyed what you've seen. Um, do give me the thumbs up and subscribe. Thumbs, oops, sorry, thumbs up. Um, let's Instagram know that you enjoy these sorts of videos and also let's you, oh, did I say Instagram? Let's YouTube know that you enjoy this sort of video and will recommend other, other similar videos to you. And it also gets my video 
recommend it to other people as well. So it's a win-win thing. So if you have enjoyed, please do subscribe. Uh, please do give it a thumbs up. Subscribe and um, you'll be notified um, when my next video comes up, which I hope will be in two or three weeks. Um, and I will leave it there for now. I hope you are doing well and um thank you for coming and watching oh the other thing i just wanted to say sorry thank you for commenting i never say that but i really do enjoy your comments um underneath the video so if you want to pop by and say hi maybe tell me where you're watching from what you've been doing while you've been watching me what you've been knitting on maybe um it's always good to to hear from you and i do try and reply to everyone sometimes i'm a little bit um slow in doing it but um generally i always get there in the end so thank you very much for watching take care of yourselves and i will speak to you really soon bye